Corfrisk was created by the talented artist Doki Doki. Corfrisk was created in the year 2050 on November 4th. And at that time, there weren't as many a use. But still, the artist was inspired by the use that existed, like Underfell and Outer Tail. But the artist was also inspired by the Gaster theory. You know, the theory that MadPat did which resulted into the fandom thinking that Gaster would be an important character. Well, this artist was inspired by this theory and thought to herself, what if this Gaster theory would happen to my favorite character Frisk? And so the idea of Core Frisk was born. And so she started working on the design of Core Frisk. And let me tell you, when I tell you that we can be happy that the first design draft of Core Frisk didn't become the final version, since this design was creepy, like lost silver level of creepiness, since Core Frisk's design showcased them having their eyes taken out by force, leaving them with only a black eye hole, and they also have their legs coughed up and a wound on their stomach. And the only way for them to actually move would be to levitate around. But on November 4, 2015, the first Corfris post was posted and the final design was showcased, as well as the main idea of Corfrisk, which was a frisk who fell down into the core, where they shattered through time and space. And since Frisk's body is not made of magic, but has instead a such a powerful soul that was full of determination and could time travel, they were able to survive this fall into the core, which was definitely not plotted by Sansa Skeleton. Speaking of skeletons, Frisk was also able to meet Gaster and could impress Gaster with their newfound power. Since Frisk was way powerful than any other monster at that time, they became, with this unfortunate accident, omnipresent, meaning that they are everywhere at once, meaning they are present in every timeline and in every multiverse at the same time. Anyways, the first comic appeared on November 7th, 2015, and it showcased Corfrisk randomly appearing in a normal Undertale timeline, where Corfrisk seek help from a random Sans. But Sans was like, Yeah, as if you are omnipresent. Stop the cap, yo. You watch too much anime, and while we're at it, stop it with the blackface, yo. I don't want to get cancelled on Twitter. Okay. And so to prove that they are omnipresent, Corfrus just rubbed Sans' search history. Okay, that didn't do that, but instead answered who Gaster was and then Sans broke down. But anyways, this would continue in another comic that was released on November 11, 2015, where the same Sans and Corfrisk would talk on the phone and talk about Corfrisk's power. And on November 24, we got a comic where Corfrisk explained to Frisk their power. And finally, on November 29, we get the first appearance of the Omega timeline, a place that would create in the future a lot of Undertale related stories. Since the Omega timeline timeline is a timeline that works like a meeting room for all other timelines. But no one except Corfris knows how to get in there. The Omega timeline is also a safe haven for Undertale related AUs that survived a genocide run or other unpleasant runs. So it isn't unusual when let's say a Kara enters the Omega timeline that they get jumped by many Sanses. Where also Kara determines that Corfrist is extremely lonely. But to know why Corfrist is so lonely, what's her origin, and if Corfrist is able to beat Arrow Sans and other OP Sanses would be answered in another video. So if you like this AU or this version of Frisk, please like this video and check out the original post. Link to this post is down in the description and in the pinned comment, so check it out. Anyways, that was it. Please check out my video about Ink or Arrow Sans.